Hello, my beautiful friends. My name is Dr. Janet Rourke. I'm a veterinarian in Central Texas and I love essential oils and I'm here every Sunday night to answer your questions about animals, about oils, about animals and oils, about anything that you really want to ask me about. My life is an open book. You can ask me about my husband. You can ask me about my dogs. Um, but yeah, I just want to give you guys a couple of updates. And if you're hopping on right now, let me know you can hear me because I'm having some sound troubles today. Gotta love tech. And um, what, what you're excited about this summer? Like, what are you excited about this summer? I am super not excited about how hot it gets in Texas because today was 104 degrees already. And I'm like, I, it's too early for that. I don't know what, how to handle that. Um, but I've been away uh, at a, I was at a, a women's retreat this week and all my animals are super excited to see me home. <laughs> I just got home a couple hours ago. And if you hear Tina in the background, it's meowing. It's because she's very happy to see her mommy. Um, so I let her in the room because she was uh, being very sad. She missed is me. So she's pretty happy right now. Um, and, uh, but yeah, this is my normal Q and a time. So if you have a question about, uh, animals and essential oils, go ahead and pop that in the chat so I can see it. And I will answer as many as I can in the short time I have with you. A couple of announcements. One, this Friday, on uh, the 17th, I cannot believe we're halfway through June already. Anyone else like, please slow down time. Um, the 17th on Friday, we are going to be covering in the membership, in the membership, we're going to have, be having our uh, monthly webinar that I do in there about playing nicely. It's going to be called playing nicely, what to do when animals don't get along. And we're going to talk, be talking about all the things that you can do when uh, you have two animals that are not best friends and um, what different things, strategies you can do. Essential oils, yes, but also other things you can do. And the other thing, the other announcement that I haven't talked about yet is that on the 20th, so a week from tomorrow, a week from Monday, um, I'll be doing a free webinar for everyone about... Um, it's called the seven secrets equestrians need to know about keeping their horse healthy. And so for all my horse friends, all my equestrian buddies, if you're an equestrian like me here, I even wore like my equestrian shirt, professional amateur. Yes, that's me. <laughs> if you ride horses or love horses, have horses, uh, this webinar is for you. It's totally free. You do need to register though. And the link to that, oh, I didn't put it in the thing. Let me put up the banner for that. Uh, if you're, if you're in the, if you want to join the membership group, the playing nicely one, that is essentialoilvet.com forward slash members. And then for the horse webinar, the link is, here we go. Um, I'll show that one. So this is a little harder to see. It's actually a little trickier. It's a go.essentialoilvet.com forward slash webinar dash horse. And that will take you to the page to register for the webinar. You do need to give me your email so I can send you the link to the webinar because it's on. Oh, oh, hey, Tina. Okay. <laughs> I told you guys she was wild today. <laughs> she just wanted to be all up on the screen. Any other crazy cat people here? That's me. Okay. I hope you guys enjoyed that. <laughs> What's up, Tina? What are you doing? It's not dinner time yet. Here, come here, baby. Oh, goodness. You got yourself in a predicament here. Okay. She usually doesn't do that. She's usually a little more shy. She does not like to be held. So she's like, no, don't hold me, but also be, um, pet me all the time. All right. Let's see what you guys have for questions. <laughs> join uh, the membership. If you want to join, if you want to see the, we the membership only webinar that I'm doing on Friday and then Monday, I'm doing the free one for everyone. Uh, seven secrets. Every equestrian needs to, to know. <laughs> oh my goodness. Today is crazy. Yes. It is way too hot, Patricia. I agree. Oh goodness. <sighs> Yes. Okay. So, uh, Laura has a question about her cats and uh, trouble integrating one. You'll want to join the membership. Actually, Laura, I think you're in there already, but if you're not, 
hop into the membership and join that webinar on Friday. We're going to uh, we talk about integrating. We have a free introducing a new pet to the home um, PDF that you guys can grab. You can get that off of the website. I don't have the, uh, I think it's essentialoilvet.com forward slash new pet. Um, let me double check on that one. Essential oil. Come new pets. No, oh, no, that's not it. Oh, kitties. Okay. New dash pet. There we go. So if you go to new dash pet, let me post that as a banner. This is a free little resource I am sending out. And you can also scroll down. I posted about it a couple of days ago. Go.essentialovet.com forward slash new dash pet. And that'll get you that free uh, PDF download. Just a little one page document on how to integrate a new pet. Um, that would be super helpful for you guys. Uh, but let me, what was the rest of your question? Uh, Laura, I lost it. There we go. Uh, one has dandruff. So a uh, 15 year old cat has dandruff losing hair on the tail. What should I do? Um, it could be usually the skin is a manifestation of what's going on internally. So if you haven't gotten blood work recently with a senior pet like that, I would really recommend um, that you get some blood work done and make sure there isn't something going on internally, renal disease, liver, it, things like that. It's digestive problems can actually cause some skin problems as well. Um, Tina, you're being very noisy, sweetie. I know. No one cares about your problems. Um, and the other, but as far as oils go, Laura, we have some really good oils that support the skin. So um, oils like Roman chamomile, lavender, um, those would probably be my first go-to ones. Um, the kids calming blend has those two oils in it and it's already well diluted and it's got some fractionated coconut oil in there which will add extra moisture then you can actually just rub that right on there and so that's a super easy way to do it if you have that little roll on um the purple one the purple kids roller let's see um let's see oh you guys i can't answer some of these questions that are non-compliant Ah, yes, Prentice, so new foster cat's been under the bed for a day and a half. Just leave it, um, they'll make sure they don't feel safe. And so keeping them separated like that, um, you don't have to worry about, it. they'll come out in their own time when they're ready, uh, making sure you have a litter box in there and you can feed it a little bit farther away from the bed every time. So it starts getting used to coming out um, from under the bed. And then you can also diffuse, um, Lavender with that balance helps a lot to get those guys out of their little, their, um, they're just really afraid because it's a new environment. And then Sylvia, um, can you use the adaptive touch on animals? Yes, you can. It's very wonderful if you have an animal that isn't sensitive to lavender. Uh, oh, Kelly, I have a Weimariner two and a half that leaks. She's potty trained, but when she's sleeping, it just drips out. Is there anything I can give her? Sometimes that's confirmation. Um, so confirmation, like how the animal is built. Um, and so you can talk to your regular veterinarian about that. It might be a sphincter issue, in which case don't do anything with lavender. Uh, avoid diffusing or using topically any lavender products, um, which can actually relax that sphincter too much, especially when they're sleeping. Um, but use oils that support that muscle like marjoram, cypress, and um, helichrysum can help with that as well. Um, cedarwood, sometimes I'll use that one. Diluted, of course. Uh, let's see. Oh, I can't answer that one, Lynn. Sorry. Sorry. Super non-compliant. Um, yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. Hi, Rhonda. Okay. I love this question. Rhonda says, I'm looking for info on how to use essential oils with beekeeping, dosing, which oils to use to treat mites and help prevent disease, that sort of thing. We actually have a really cool post in the membership about bees and it covers most of this information. Um, it's pretty basic stuff and you can actually find this information. I believe there, there's actually probably some essential oils and bees 
um, Facebook pages that you can find and things like that. Uh, but I know for sure we cover it in the membership. And so hop on over there. I don't have it off the top of my head because I'm not, I don't work with beans very often, but I did do the research and, uh, create and, um, created a really good resource there in the membership for you to have regarding that. So, um, so yeah, I head over there for that info. Uh, Okay, cool, Laura. Awesome. Awesome. Oh, yes. Okay. And then Shantae, um, my two-year-old pup child took a pretty good nick under his neck while grooming. Is there anything I can put on him to soothe and heal? Yes. Lots of skin healing oils that are super good for dogs. Um, uh, lavender, rum, and chamomile. Um, Helichrysum is really good. Uh, you can even do yarrow palm if you have it. Um, uh, uh, geranium is excellent, especially if it's still bleeding a little. Frankincense copaiba, you can make up. I like making up a little roller bottle with uh, about four to five drops each, a 10 milliliter roller bottle with four to five drops each of frankincense, myrrh, a couple drops of helichrysum, and uh, a couple of drops of geranium and that will help prevent infection and heal that up really, really quickly. Um, so that is a really great little recipe for you. Um, yeah. Okay. Lynn, uh, my dog has gunk in his eyes most mornings. Is there an oil for this? No, we do not want to put oils in the eyes. Okay. Never, ever, 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 never, never, never put oils in eyes. Okay. Hopefully I emphasize that enough that no one will ever forget that. Um, <laughs> but Lynn, there are some things that you can do. So if it is crusty and gross and the eyes are a little, uh, red or the gunk is yellow or green, then you can use a cool, a uh, cold compress. And what you do for that is you do two cups of cold water. You can even put a little ice in there and make it super cold. And then a, a drop or two of lavender. You can use Roman chamomile. You can use um, frankincense or copaiba. And then just pick one. And then dip a washcloth in there, like a cotton washcloth, wring it out really well, and then hold it over the eyes. Hold it over the eyes. If you can get it up to five minutes, um, that would be really good. And then, you know, that would kind of loosens up the gunk and you can wipe it with the washcloth, when, you know, as you're going. But holding it over the eyes with that cool and then that, that calming oil really helps to um, help that uh, gunk to kind of dissipate over time. Um, it's not, it's not a quick fix, but you're going to have to wipe them out anyways. And so you might as well use some, some calming oils. So you're going to hold the compress over with the eyes closed. So you don't get oils in the eyes and that works, seems to work really, really well. And then, um, but if it's not, if the eyes are not red and the gunk is not yellow or green, then you can use a warm compress. Uh, so same thing, two cups of warm water, a drop or two of frankincense or lavender, or, you know, your calming oil of choice. It's very gentle. Dip the washcloth in there, wring it out really well and hold it over the closed eyes. It'll soothe the eyes and the oils will act kind of um, aromatically, but also topically a little bit, just a teeny tiny bit. It's very, very diluted at that rate. Um, and, um, and that can really, really help with those eyes. So I hope that's helpful. Um, oh, Eric has a really good question. Okay. How do we find a veterinarian who use oils or is holistic? Now you're going to have to ask about oils because not all holistic veterinarians use oils because they don't know, and they haven't taken my animal aromatherapy course yet. And they should, um, so you should send them my way if they haven't, because, uh, they will get what they need to be able to use oils in their practice. Um, but a lot of them don't feel comfortable with it because they haven't had the education yet. And my course is 
certified for continuing education for veterinarians. So it's uh, not just for veterinarians. Obviously, actually, most of the people that we go, have go through that course are um, people just like you who love animals and want to help them. Or maybe they um, work with animals and they want to add another tool to their toolbox or they work with essential oils and they want to really focus on animals more. Um, but finding a veterinarian who is holistic, there's a couple of organizations, websites that you can go to. The American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association, the AHVMA.org. Um, if you go there, you can click on find a vet and you'll find a holistic a listing of holistic veterinarians that are part of that organization. The other places you can go is finding veterinarians who do acupuncture. A lot of those are holistically minded or at least integrative. And the places you go to find those guys, hold on. <laughs> oh, bless me. The pollen is high. Um, the uh, the places you find those veterinarians are ivas, I-V-A-S dot org. You can click on find a vet on there or the Chi Institute and you can just Google C-H-I Institute and it's in Florida. And I think they have a find a vet on their website as well. So if you go to those websites where veterinarians kind of hang out, like there's listings on those ones um, that are pretty good. So definitely check those out to find a holistic veterinarian in your area. If you're not sure, you can also just search for your area for veterinarians who do acupuncture. And those people are definitely more open to using oils, even if they don't use oils, um, they're not going to yell at you for using them necessarily. So that's always kind of nice when you're like, I know using oils is fine because of Dr. Rourke. And, you know, obviously thousands and thousands of animals are getting healed on a regular basis because of them. So, um, so yeah, I hope that's helpful, Eric. Uh, da, 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 da. Yes, Laura, I have had several. We've had um, over a dozen veterinarians have taken the course. So there are definitely some awesome people out there um, that are doing that. Rachel has a really good question. And we'll end with this one. Um, it's kind of a negative. I, don't, I like ending on a positive note. But this is really important because it's safety. And you guys know I'm super passionate about safety. What oils can you not diffuse in close proximity to cats? And the answer to that is it, um, any essential oil that is not a pure therapeutic oil. So if you got your oils on Amazon, don't diffuse those. Um, so, um, and if you're not sure if it's a good oil, you can always ask me, I'll let you know. Um, but there are three brands that I really do think are quite good. Um, doTERRA, Young Living, and Animalio. And it's, it's, it's spelled Animal EO. And that's, that's the, Dr. Melissa Shelton's brand of oils which are also very safe. So, um, so brand matters. Okay. So uh, any of the, any brands outside of that, I would be very, I would just not use them around cats. Okay. Even, even if you're like, but I heard it was just as good. It's not, I promise. Um, then as far as if you, uh, as far as those brands of oils go, use a little bit of caution using tea tree diffused around cats too much. Now, if it's in a blend, chances are, two or three drops of that blend is going to have like a 0.1 drop of tea tree oil. And that's not going to have any effect on them whatsoever. So I wouldn't worry about like the pre-made blends that have it in it, but pure tea tree or melaleuca um, can cause some problems. If your cat has respiratory problems, like a history of respiratory problems, be careful with the really strong oils. So things like oregano, peppermint, uh, eucalyptus. Um, uh, what are some other really strong ones, guys? Like thyme can be kind of spicy, cinnamon, just those really strong smelling oils that um, can just irritate those those cats that have sensitive sensitive respiratory tracts because of previous problems or they're, they have asthma or something like that. So just be careful with those ones. Um, if your cat is one of those that has, if your cat's like, my cat's never had any respiratory problems. If you're, as long as you're sticking to four, like three to five drops in your water-based diffuser and it's, you leave the room door open, pretty much anything is fair game. Um, Cassie has another one that's a little spicy that you want to be a little bit more careful with that one. But the big one is tea tree. 
um, tea tree diffusing. And for more information about safety, any of you can go to um, essentialoilvet.com forward slash safety. And I have a ton of information on the website and you can download this free 17 page document. That's beautiful. It's like a nice little handout that you can keep handy. You can print it off um, and look at, look, look it up. If you're not sure um, it's essential oil vet.com for slash pet safety. That's a free basically little booklet that I'm giving to you guys. So um, definitely download that if you haven't already. And hopefully I will see you guys on Friday for the um, playing nicely what to do when your animals don't get along webinar over in the membership group. And if you're, if not, and you're a horse person, I hope I see you on Monday, next Monday, the 20th for the seven secrets every equestrian needs to know about keeping their horse healthy. I'll see you guys next Sunday, no matter what, for another Q and A at 7 PM. This one's a little longer. I guess I just missed you guys. So, <laughs> and Tina decided to make an appearance. <laughs> prolong things a little bit. But I love you guys. I'll see you soon. Bye.